Hello again and welcome back to another video. Today we are be going to be making something inspired by one of my favorite pieces of art in the entire world and that is the Unicorn in Captivity Tapestry. Um, I first learned about this tapestry I think in like fifth grade? I don't know, when I was little. Um, because it was the focus of a magic treehouse book. And so ever since then, I was obsessed with seeing it. I really wanted to see it. I finally did at the Met Cloisters, which was so amazing. So I wanted something to wear that had it on it. So I whipped up some spoonflower fabric, and I, which is what I will be showing you now. So here's my fabric. It's pre-washed, so it needs a good iron. But basically what I did is I made these panels that have the tapestry on them, and I have three of them. Um, both in case I mess up, and if, in, if I want to make like a mask or something out of one of the other unicorns, I totally could. The rest of the fabric, I copy and pasted and used the fill tool to create one continuous floral pattern. I mean, it's not great, there are some places where it's repetitive, but I think once it's made into a full shirt, you won't be able to see it. I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. I have an idea for how I'm going to do the back, but I don't know if it will work exactly how I am planning on it, but hopefully it does. Because I don't know how else I'm going to do the closure. You'll, you'll have to find out with me. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. All right, let's get started. The first thing I needed to do was trim all of the white parts off of my fabric. And since the whole tapestry was going to become my front panel, I just left that one as is. And then once those were all cut out, I ironed up the bottom and the top down so that it was the size that I wanted for the shirt. And using the same patterning method I used in my pinafore tutorial, I patterned the side front and then copied the slope of the armpit to the side back and left the edge that will be connecting to the back piece flat. And then for the back piece, I cut out one huge rectangle the same width as the side back. And then I could get to my sleeves. For the sleeves, I just threw a pattern together. I did this in my Samantha video, and that just made me so cocky. So we're doing it again. And it worked, it was fine. I didn't have very much fabric left at this point, and that was the only thing that was technically wrong with the sleeves. I wish they were a little bigger. Once that was done, I am prepping to finish the edges of the sleeves by folding the hem up once and twice. And I'm doing this along the bottom of the sleeves as well as the top of the sleeve cap. Thank you. 
and then all those same pieces got cut out of a white lining fabric. The spoon flower fabric is a little scratchy, I don't love it, so I used a really soft cotton to line them. And then the same thing with the front. Once all of that is done, I'm going to pin together all of my bodice pieces, leaving one of the side back seams open so, so that I can get my elastic in later. And then I realized that the side back pieces were a little longer than I'd like, so I marked where I wanted to chop them and cut them short. And then we can sew that all together. And I'm just using a simple straight stitch and using the side of my machine foot as the seam allowance because that's my favorite thing to do. If you've seen any other video, this will not be a surprise to you. Once that was together, I ironed the seams open if they were a flat seam and to one side for the curved seam on the side fronts. And then I marked all of those elastic channels. To get into this shirt, we're going to do elastic on the back. So I'm marking the four channels that I'm going to be using with my ruler. So then we can attach the lining to the rest of the fabric. And then once again, that is sewn on with the same type of straight stitch. and then we can flip that out. For the lining, I excluded the big back piece from the construction, because that is going to be attached differently and separately. I wanted to leave the side back seams 
open so that I could slip the elastic in. And then I just ironed that to make sure the edge was nice and crisp. And then here I am attaching the side, other side back piece to the back piece to make it one continuous loop. I still don't have the back lining on this. This was kind of a complicated process and I'm not sure I'm explaining it that well. If you'd like a full tutorial, please comment below and I can do that for you. And then once that was done, I am finally pinning the back lining to the top of the back. Just the top, not the sides. The sides are going to be left free. And that gets stitched on the same way. And then I'm ironing it down and then tucking the edges of the bottom upwards as well as I'm doing the same thing with the lining and then I'm tucking the two edges inwards so all of those edges will be finished off easily. Now I'm just top stitching the lining together at the bottom. And then we're going to stitch all those elastic channels on. This, it was a process. And then once that was done, I am top stitching down those seam allowances that I turned up on the sleeves to make those their own little elastic channels as well. And I'm doing the same for the top edge for just the shoulder, not the part that is going to be attached to the bodice. And then I fed some elastic through. And the same for the bottom. Once that was done, I just went back and forth over each end of the elastic to keep them in place. And then I sewed the sleeve up to complete the sleeve construction.
Oh, I also top stitched the rest of the allowance down that was not a part of the elastic channel to make sure that the look remained continuous. Once that was done, sorry for the dramatic lighting, I pinned the sleeve onto the bodice so that they could be top stitched together. And here's me doing that top stitching. I guess it's not top stitching, it's kind of just normal stitching, but it felt like top stitching. that is done, we can start the long process of feeding all four pieces of the elastic through those bottom channels. pinning them at the end to keep them in place while we do the others. This took so long and was slightly painful, but it was starting to look like a shirt and that was very rewarding. Once those are all done, we just have to stitch along each side in order to keep the elastic in place and finish the top. And this is the last of the steps. Overall, I'm very happy with this project. I wish I had ordered a little more fabric because the sleeves could be a little puffier and when you pull them all the way up, they kind of make the shirt gape a little weird. But I like the fun off the shoulder look. I also wish that I had made it just a tiny bit longer. Um, when I lift my arms too high, it kind of, you know, it shows a little more than I'd like it to. But I'm very happy with it and it's making me want to be a romantic princess and go back to the Met and just bask in the glory of the unicorn tapestries. The part that I'm happiest with is the back. I really like how that turned out. It looks a lot better than I honestly thought it would. And it's such an easy closure method that I want to implement in many more shirts and maybe make a few more this style. Maybe with bigger sleeves this time though. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more fashion-y, historical sort of content. Please let me know what your favorite piece of art is and if you've ever gotten to see it or if you're hoping to one day. But that is it for this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Okay, bye!